involving Shad, JTG, and Eve against myself, Natalia, and David Hart Smith. And he said, like, TJ, even now, um, he has one of the greatest minds in wrestling. And even now, with a with a broken neck, he would run circles around 99.9% .9 of the guys. And like, man, it'll get me <clears throat> emotional. But uh, to see those were his true thoughts about me. <clears throat> it, it, that meant the world to me. I, I met Shad when, um, when I first got to OBW back in 2004. Remember after practice one day, Shad just called me up out of the blue and he was like, hey man, um, a lot of us are getting together. We're going to go have some drinks down here. And Shad picked me up and, and Shad was one of those guys when you go out with him, Shad just kind of hovers around everyone. And he's kind of like that protector, but yet that person that makes sure everybody has a good time. And that's what he did for me. So he kind of like welcomed me into the, into the group. Shad's just going to be missed, man. He's going to be missed forever. I always remembered in the matches that I was in with Shad, he always wanted to make sure that I was included. He always wanted to make sure that I was involved. He, he really cared about me. He cared about me um, being, being included. And that meant so much to me because he didn't have to fight for me on a lot of things. It's a good reminder for all of us to live our lives the way that Shad lived his, with passion, with enthusiasm, super optimistic, you know? Um, and it just warms my heart every time I hear stories uh, of Shad because it just kind of further, you know, um, emphasizes just how much of an impact and a positive impact he had on, um, on all of us. He was a lovable human being, just happy. Each and every day he walked through, walked through these doors coming to work. And uh, Matt and I, you know, I always dreamed of a feud with Crime Time, man. We didn't ever get to have it, but man, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm blessed that I had the pleasure of knowing him. He wanted everybody he was around to make sure he went around almost like a concierge. Are you good? You good? You having fun? And uh, a lot of times we, we were very lucky. Uh, the Kentucky Derby was in Louisville and it was a big weekend. And he wanted to go around and make sure everybody was taken care of, everybody was having a good time. And it's just like, he wasn't just like that on those days. He was like that all the time. And a lot of people are very lucky that he was in our life. You know, you never really realize how, 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 how many people that Chad touched. Um, obviously the wrestling world was real and uh, but while out in California, spending time with his family and just seeing all the outpour of just guys in movies, guys in, in TV, the bodybuilding world, I mean... It's been... Man, it's, it's actually been unbelievable. That's, that's the only way I can put it. Thinking about um, all the stories and memories, I have uh, with with him. Um, I realized, like, man, like he he loved me, you know. He uh, he treated me like family, and uh, I hope he knew that I loved him right back. And uh, I wish that I'd had a chance to tell him um, how I felt about him and um, how much he's done for me personally uh, before. Uh, he passed, but um, you gotta believe that uh, Shad's big ass is up there somewhere looking down and enjoying um, life. He wouldn't want anyone to be sad for him. He would uh, probably just want people to make dumb jokes and laugh about uh, all the good times that they had with him year old son Sunday afternoon when the two got caught in the waves. When lifeguards swam out to help, Gaspard reportedly told them to focus on the boy. One of the many amazing things about Shad was that Shad found joy in bringing joy to everyone around him. When I think of Shad, I see that huge smile of his and the way that he would make you feel so special. He was definitely one of a kind. When I first met Shad, without me asking him, he did some pretty cool things for me. Shad was a great young man with a great attitude, and he strived to get better every time he got in the ring. I always said Shad was a walking superhero, and now the world sees it.
was such a great guy. They, you know, Shad was one of those guys that everybody loved so nice and, and finding success and all these other things he was doing in Hollywood and, and everything else. Shad went after everything that he was passionate about in his life. If there's anything uh, that I can share with you about the loss of Shad Gaspard, is that dude was a dream chaser. You should be inspired by his journey and inspired by his, his final sacrifice. Shad, thank you for always being there for me. You were more than my tag team partner more than a friend. You were the big brother I always wanted. I miss you. Now, some of y'all can relate to me. Some of y'all want and deserve proper respect. Stand up, break out, and take what you deserve. And don't let people stand in your way. Dude, welcome. Thanks for having me, Lillian. I'm sorry that it has to be under these circumstances. It's all right. It's all right. It's, uh, it has been a horrible week and a tumultuous week and a ups mm -hmm. and the downs and then seeing the silver linings and mm -hmm. and all of this. How have you been able to process everything that's been going on? Because you were there on Sunday, right? Yeah, right um, when it happened. Yeah, Lillian, um, Siliana called me uh, Sunday night. I was getting ready to go to bed and she called me from Shad's phone. You know, when Shad calls me, I pick up on the first, second ring. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Um, we, we speak to each other every day. We text and we spoke to each other every day. Um, that, but he called me uh, that, that, um, that evening and it was his wife. And his wife um, told me that Shad was missing. And um, I'm like, what are you... At first, the first thing I thought it was a prank because we, we right. always pranked each other. That's, that's Shad and I's relationship. We roasted each other. We pulled pranks on each other. And that's the first thing that came to mind. But for some reason, the tone of her voice, I'm like, is either this is real or she's a good, good actress. Um, but I said, I'm going to go along with it. You know, I jumped mm -hmm. in the shower, brushed my teeth, and I, um, I rushed over there. And then um, we were on the beach with, beach with flashlights looking for Shad. <clears throat> so we were we was there for a few. I was there till a little past midnight. And, um, you know, I think that day I think I accepted it. You know, mm -hmm. I had I had to accept it, yeah. I didn't you know, I was waiting for, you know, a big bear hug from behind, like, ah, I gotcha, you know, but I'm, a part of me is still waiting for that big bear hug from I behind. I know, <sighs> it's so hard to accept. I mean, I got there uh Monday morning mm -hmm. and Candace and I, but then, you know, when I saw Siliana's face and Araya, oh my gosh, both of them. I mean, you could just see how distraught. Yeah. And <clears throat> knowing, you know, they just showed up at the beach to have a fun day. Mm -hmm. And then something like that happens. And it wasn't like Shad didn't know how to swim. Yeah, Some people he, are like... He knew how to swim and he went right? to the beach religiously. He was He's a, from Curacao. Like, yeah. he grew up on the beach. Yeah. Just on Saturday, we, me and him were supposed to go to the beach. Um, he had texted uh, Chris Masters and I, because Chris Masters just moved back to California. Yeah. Um, to LA and he was like, hey guys, let's all go to the beach on, um, oh, was it Saturday? And then, um, Chris Masters had plans and I'm like, okay, I'm down, you know, and then, um, I didn't hear from him that Saturday and he went Sunday with his, with his family. Before crime time, I, uh, I was 19 years old and, um, I went to, uh, one wrestling school before that and then everybody was, everybody was talking about OVW. OVW was the place to go. OVW is where everybody's getting signed, Brock Lesnar. John Cena, I'm hearing all these big names. I'm like, yeah, okay, I need to go down to Louisville, Kentucky. Me being a city kid from Brooklyn, Louisville was a, definitely a culture, culture, <laughs> a culture yeah. shift. And I didn't want to go. So at first, instead of moving there um, right away, um, I would take the Greyhound bus on mm. the weekends. From New York? From New York. How long is that trip? 18 hours. Holy yeah. commitment. Yeah, I was taking the bus. Um, wow. So I worked at AMC in Times Square. And I was there many times yeah, there. Wow. I, worked, I worked there, and you have to work weekends. It's like you had to work at the movie theater. Our busiest is Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. 
And then um, I explained to them, like, look, I, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. Like, now nah, I'm trained to be a professional wrestler. I'm going to be a professional wrestler. I need the weekends off. You're like, you can't do that. Then you can't work here. Then I said, you know, please accommodate. I'm going to work. I could work doubles throughout the week. I just need. And the bus station is right there after yeah. work. I could go. It's, it's very convenient for me. I really appreciate if you do this for me. And then they, you know, I, I talked to them, like, I'm going to come back when I'm a big star, you know. <laughs> like, I really, like, come in. And, they, was, and they, they gave me the pass. So after work, I would, uh jump on the bus to go go to um greyhound station and then i'll be in louisville uh early i'll get there early like around 12 midnight um and then i would be in the bus station for hours mm. and then i'll take a taxi to to the um to class to train for two hours and then back to new york city wow yeah okay and then that's where you met Th no, no, I was doing that for a while, and then my um, bus was breaking down, you know, because the winter came, but the bus was breaking down. I was late. I was showing up, doing all that traveling and showing up the last 20, 30 minutes of practice. Oh, God! And the trainer was like, look, if you want to do this, you're going to have to move here. It's like, you can't just keep taking the bus. Yeah, because how long were you doing that for? A few months. I can't remember exactly, but okay. it was a few months. You know, they saw potential in me. And he was like, you got potential, you got charisma, you know, you got to put some size on. I think I was like 180 or something. Hey, you have put size on, dude. But, you know, you have, you, but you, have, yeah, you, have, you have charisma. Yeah. So you're going to have to move out here. And then as I did, the, uh, first I moved into a, um, a motel. There's a lot of wrestlers went there. It was called the Suburban Lodge. A lot of the wrestlers went there. Yeah. They stayed there, but I was like going to go to live there. And then um, I think... Uh, it was Ivory. I believe it was Ivory. Oh, my God. Ivory. Yeah. Uh, Ivory. I think me and her spoke, and I told her my situation, and I think she spoke to Shad. And then Shad found out, and he was thinking about moving. And then um, he was like, I have a, a one-bedroom apartment. I'm, I'm going to move out, and you could, you know, take over, the, take over the lease. And he gave me my first apartment. Oh. We were making pretty good money, uh, fame, um, being on TV every week. Um, it was a lot at at twenty one, but I, I think I, I think we handled it all right. You know, we didn't do mm -hmm. anything crazy. Um, we did get a, get into a few trouble. We did get fired, but the, the, yeah. the fans uh, demanded you, us back. What, can can you say why you got fired? Oh, we got uh, we got into a situation um, with another tag team. You remember Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch? Mm -hmm. A rib gone bad, and um, we put our hands on the referee. You know, we did our finishing move on the referee. I don't know if you remember that. Right, I yeah. do remember that. Yeah. They were like, do not touch the ref. Referee, big no-no. And then, you know, we had to, we got released and we were gone for about six months. And then we came back the day after WrestleMania. And that was one of the best reactions we got. Um, well, I'm going to say the second best reaction we ever got uh, was from, the from the crowd. The best was um, working Chris Jericho and Big Show. It was a show in New England. And we were the semi-main event. And the crowd was just, the, you could, you were stomping their feet, crime time, crime time. And I remember, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Chris Jericho looked at me like, wow, you got that road warrior pop. I never knew what that, <laughs> what that was, but I, through, yeah. what, but, uh, through the years of being in the wrestling business, like a road warrior pop, that's like a, that, that's a loud, it's like very loud, but the whole arena, the crowd was stomping. You could hear them in the back. We were in the back. In the yeah. I don't, like we, I, it wasn't even our time to uh, perform yet. Oh, wow. But we were doing so good on, um. On television, this the segment with us and Big Sh uh, with Big Show and Jericho for the tag team titles. It was like the, they were like it was it was our time. They thought we were going to get the titles, yeah. And the crowd was so loud. I'm like, wow, we're over, man. This feels great. Oh, <laughs> this feels great. That's awesome. <laughs> this feels great. It does feel good. Oh, man, yeah. When you're over, when you're a fan favorite, it's like it's, it's better than being to be honest. Better than being a champion. You know, they could put the title on anybody, but you can't make the crowd love you, and that's what we had.